Hello, a very good evening to you and you welcome to another exciting edition of Diplomatic Affairs. My name is Harriet Nate and we are coming to you live from the studios of Pan-African Television right here in Accra, Abilinkpi. And so wherever you are, you can also join us because we are streaming live on Facebook and on YouTube. So you need to be part of today's edition of Diplomatic Affairs. It's going to be very, very interactive as always. Today we'll be talking about soft power diplomacy, the impact of soft power diplomacy. Now soft power diplomacy has evolved with time and assumed a new twist. Events in a rapidly developing world has also ignited calls for the building of a mutually beneficial and deeply satisfying relationship among countries. The integral role of diplomats in making this a reality cannot be overlooked, especially in the field of consolidating democracy and deepening good governance. On today's episode of Diplomatic Affairs, we will assess, evaluate the role of soft power diplomacy in realizing this objective. My guests are already here and after this break, you will get to meet them. I'll be back after this break. Trasaco Estates, home to Accra's most beautiful and luxurious homes, presents its newest addition, Trasaco Springs. A premium master plan community of service plots surrounded by an exhaustive list of amenities. The gated community of Tema to Accra Motorway presents you the finest opportunity to own a land that suits your preferred size, budget, and payment terms. Trasaco Springs is open to you for development. Our on site sales executives are ready. Call on 055 659. Two six five eight. Hello, what are you doing Tuesday to Friday, 7 30 to 9 o'clock p.m. every day? You should be watching the couch. I'll tell you why. On Tuesdays, we talk social issues, lifestyle, health, all those everyday issues that affect us in the big ways. Let's Wednesdays are for book reviews. Thursdays are for the hard talk, those social, economic, policy oriented, political questions that demand for the tough questions to be asked. And personality profiling Fridays, when we get to know the stories behind the winning personalities we love. Inspirational story from inspirational personalities. Hey, listen, you really cannot miss the couch with me, Amma, but still. The only TV show with a hat. Welcome back. The show is Diplomatic Affairs and my name is Harriet Nati. Now, before we go to the main agenda for today's show, I have two stories that I will be presenting before we go to our interview right here in the studio. Now, Ghana Exports Imports Bank has relaunched its Popular Tuesday Market, an initiative aimed at creating awareness for made in Ghana products and harnessing their potential for export. Spot. The event held at the World Trade Center in Accra on April 26, 2022, saw an exhibition of Made in Ghana products between the hours of 10 to 6 p.m. with me Harriet Nate and we are at the Ghana Exim Bank Tuesday market remember there was a break a very long one when COVID actually came in so at the peak of COVID they had to pull the bricks it looks like they are back and the Tuesday market is also back so we will be seeing more of this but for today's event which seems to be the maiden one if I can say so I have a few diplomats who are passing through to shop and also get to know some of the Ghanaian products that we have 
have on display. And so I have with me the incredible, amazing, hardworking Peruvian ambassador to Ghana. Abel, and Abel is going to be telling us what he's doing here. I spotted him here. Hi, Abel. Hello, Harriet, and hello to everybody here in Ghana. Thank you very much for this opportunity, you know, to, to give some words in front of the camera and to let all Ghanaians know that this event is amazing. Uh, yet again, we are just uh, taking a little taste of the, the amazing Ghanaian products, not just in terms of food, but in terms of everything, you know, fabrics, uh, fashion, well, fashion, what else can we say right <laughs> but yes so we are we are just here i came with my sisters that are visiting me for all the way from peru oh. yes 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 they came from peru to visit me and uh, of course it would it would have been a real sin not to bring him not to bring, bring them, them here. here to see all the products and to see all the Ghanaian things we are really enjoying it and they are buying i don't know how they are going to take all the things they are buying <laughs> now you know <laughs> Well, they are running your account down. Yeah, well, not exactly. That, that my, my main problem is not uh, about my account. My main problem is how they are going to take all those things to Peru <laughs> because the luggage is going to be really heavy this time, you know? Right, so this is how they connect with Ghana. It's, it's great to have them here because I see so many things on display. I see food, like you said. I see, um, is it um, fabrics? Um, I see um, some peanut butter. Um, and all these are yes, made here have, in Ghana. We have seasonings. Yes. We also have some uh, some indus industrial things, you know, and also uh, te uh, technique and teaching things. And here we have some um, makeup, you know, and beauty products. I mean, it's absolutely complete. You can see everything here. And one important thing that I think that it's something that he must be kept in all Ghanaians' brains. All these products are made in Ghana, and they all are, or are of a very high, high quality. So please keep in mind, Ghanaians' products are incredibly good and they are made for you, by you. So come on, take, adv take advantage of them, you know. What, what, what business opportunity do you see here between Ghana and Peru? Let's well, talk about business. Well, there are a lot of business opportunities, you know. The, the, our main concern right now is, um, well, in Peru we, are, we, we have a lot of productions which are very similar to the Ghanaian ones. But because of being similar, it doesn't mean that we cannot be complementary. Right. For example, just to, to mention one thing, fabrics. You know, the Peruvian cotton is the best cotton of the world. And our fabrics are also very nice. However, the fashion and the fabrics of, of Ghana are incredibly nice and they are absolutely different from ours. So that's something we can complement and that's something that here Ghanaians could definitely have a market in my country. And in the case of uh, the production of cotton, of course, there's another market for our cotton here in Ghana. Just talking about products. Now, if we are going to talk, to talk about food, because, you know, Peru, we Peruvians have to talk about food always. That's part of us. Uh, the seasoning. For example, right now, my, my sisters just bought this seasoning for making uh, kelewele because they loved the kelewele. We also eat plantain in Peru, and we also fry it. But we don't put all those spices, you see? And the kelewele has an amazing taste just because of the spices. So it is very important also that that's another opportunity of business because I am sure that all the, the Peruvian citizens are going to love kelewele as soon as they taste it. So we have a lot of things. I'm very impressed by um, what I have seen First, like this generally creates the awareness of what we have been able to do as a country in terms of um, what the private sector can do and it also offers a platform for the private sector to be able to showcase what they are into. First, like this also offers the private sector the opportunity to be able to network and to find partners as well as collaborate with others within the same sector to be able to grow together and find businesses together. Since COVID-19 broke, this uh, Tuesday fair was suspended for a while and today it's just begun and going around the various exhibitors and finding out how business is by, uh, the, the, um, be by beginning today, it, it's rather impressive and uh, today, a lot of them have given very good reviews about, about it. And those of us who have come here to see what has been done, to know and can tell that with 
some extra and little push, we are not far away from getting to where we are hoping to get to. Uh, we see the beautiful packaged items, the rice, the tomato paste, the, the flour, everything. And even uh, a lot of things that are indigenous Ghanaian foods, looking at the, the professional way in which they have been packaged to meet the international standards, tell us, it, it all tells us that we are ready for the opportunities associated with the export market. This initiative, I believe, started in 2019. In 2019, we held nine editions. It may interest you to note that we had a lunch in London and uh, we had one in, in Germany. It's very sustainable. We are committed to the government's SME development agenda. Indeed, the board of Ghana Exim Bank, um, together with executive management, have approved a certain amount of money that goes into, into uh, financing this fair. It might also uh, interest you to note that it's free. We don't charge them anything. So it's by invitation. We wish we could have about 200 businesses here today, but we couldn't. We have about 60 businesses represented here today. So indeed, we are committed to this cause and it could even get better. It, um, you will agree with me that um, we have a lot of um, diplomatic missions in Ghana. I think we had about uh, 12 ambassadors visiting us um, today from various, representing various countries. It's a schedule. So, you know, we cannot forsake our brothers from the continent. More so with continental free trade, we cannot do that. So I'm happy to report to you that from next month, you see a lot of them. Right, welcome back. The show is still Diplomatic Affairs. So that was the Tuesday market, an initiative by the Ghana Exim Bank. Um, they took a break when COVID was at its peak, and now they are back. And so it's going to be happening, I think, twice every month. And the idea is to promote Made in Ghana products. And so I'll be bringing you more on that. Now, away from that, let's take you all the way to Zimbabwe right here in Accra. The ambassador of Zimbabwe to Ghana, His Excellency Kufa Ichinoza, says Zimbabwe has intensified its efforts generating growth through intentional mobilization of domestic growth sectors. Now, speaking at its 42nd independence anniversary, he intimated that the country is open for business and called on investors from Africa and beyond in order for the country to implement her development agenda. Let's take you to the National Day. Well, 
Welcome back. Finally, it's time for us to get interactive. Like I said, we are live on Facebook and on YouTube. So wherever you are, you can be part of this conversation. Let's get interactive. Send us all your messages, your thoughts, whatever you have regarding diplomacy, soft power diplomacy, the impact of soft power diplomacy. And of course, if we are going to be talking about soft power diplomacy, who is the best person to help us understand the elements of soft power diplomacy and how they can use that to get the people to love them, to work with them and get all the results that we need. So I have with me the beautiful, amazing, everybody's favorite. Can I say that? Yes, I guess I can say that. I will say that. Everybody's favorite, the ambassador of France to Ghana, Her Excellency and Sophie Ave, Your Excellency. I am so humbled to have you on Diplomatic Thank Affairs. Thank you very much. I think you are depicting a very amazing picture. I'm not sure I, I can live up to those standards, but thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks Apaba. for having me. Apaba. Apaba. Thanks very Great. much. Great. And I also have um, two amazing personalities. I have always been a fan. But the truth is, well, you can ask them later. We meet on the field most of the time i see them the way they run the way they pay so much attention the way do, they don't joke about their work when it comes to the work please you know that they will deliver 
I'm so happy to have them today. I also happened to meet them on a very important assignment, which I will be sharing with you very, very soon. Um, that's going to be part of the conversation we will be having on this show right now. I have Emmanuel Apia Jan and Samuel Apia Jan. Twins don't beg. Ladies and gentlemen, here they are. Hello, Hi. gentlemen. Thank you. It's so good to see you. It's, it's, Finally. It's kind of weird hearing my full name. <laughs> <laughs> because you don't get yeah, that. We always hear twins don't beg. Twins don't beg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, welcome to the show. Yeah, welcome thank to you the very show. Much. I'm so happy to have you. This is going to be your first time. This show is unscripted today. I was asked not to have Oh, that's excellent. Nothing. So we are just going to have a very interesting conversation. I want us to be very practical. We'll talk about your work, what you do, twins don't beg. We'll talk about your affiliations and we will talk to Her Excellency about France in Ghana and how she has been able to get the whole world especially Ghanaians falling in love with France. Now, Your Excellency, let me ask you a question. This is going to be your first time on our platform. This is the second time you are yes. on Diplomatic Affairs. Yeah, I have a loyalty card. You have a loyalty yeah. card. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. So I'll give you one later. Don't worry. Yeah. Let's talk about your kind of diplomacy. Is it that diplomacy has evolved with time? Because it looks like Ghanaians are beginning to appreciate your work because they can easily see what you do on the ground what's your approach well that's a complicated question because i think that uh, every type of diplomacy really depends on the actual relationship between uh, the countries um, so in a country where we have a long history and where we might have some tensions uh, we are back to some very classical diplomacy where we try to untangle whatever misunderstanding there, there might be. In a country where we have quite loose relationships, we will just try and do the usual, you know, cooperation and francophone country, we, will, we won't do French, we will do some different things. So every country has a different uh, relationship with France and uh, every ambassador is the product of um, and, and is carrying a, a mandate that has uh, uh, that is different mm -hmm. depending on the existing relation and what we want to achieve so here in ghana the relations have always been very friendly we 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 don't have a past we don't have a colonial past let's mm -hmm. put it that way um we but we were we were not a major partner either um we are not because we are so invested in the rest of west africa uh what's left to, to invest in Ghana is, is not spontaneously happening. Uh, you know, companies, French companies, they, they are much easier attracted to a uh, francophone country. Their staff speak French and, and it's, it, it seems to be more natural. And the, the administration is usually organized like, the, like France is. So it makes it, it, they find it easier to find their way um, in, in the organization, mm -hmm. the bureaucracy or whatever. Here we had friendly yet quite loose and uh, um, relationships, no, no, no hard feelings, but no, no mad love either. Um, so the, 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 the whole point of what you call soft power as opposed to hard power mm -hmm. is, uh, is not about uh, balancing strength or um, give, doing some win-win things where, through the power, through, through strength really, that's what we call hard power. It's about getting people to love and to, to know and decide whether they want to love you or not um, and, and doing things that will um, entice people, that will be seducive, attractive instead of sort of forcing people to agree with you or to join your point of view. Um, the, the stakes were, were, were not super high because uh, the, 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 um, there was no risk uh, to try and, and get closer to mm -hmm. Ghana. Mm -hmm. There was only good things to, to take away. Uh, we didn't know when I arrived that the president would then chair ECOWAS and would then later on be elected at uh, the UN Security Council. So we didn't know at the beginning how uh, close we would need to be uh, to, to do diplomacy, an actual diplomacy on, on the issues that we were suddenly facing. Um, and it has proven eventually that this approach of, of uh, uh, actual soft power was probably the best approach because 
it enables people to make their own opinion. Um, I didn't want to arrive and say, look, France is doing this, doing that, so you, you, you'd better think that we're the good guys. I just displayed what we were, what we were doing through the show Touch of France, um, what we do in France, not better, not worse, just different. Not when, extraordinary. Not extraordinary. Than what other just, are doing. oh, uh, in France, school is free, we don't have a uniform. It's not a comparison saying it's better or worse, mm -hmm. it's just saying this is different. So just displaying how we are different and then how we work closely with Ghana on different cooperation projects. And people just, you know, um, probably related and thought, oh, if that's what France is, and it made them feel like getting to know more. And I, I believe that when, when people make their own opinion mm -hmm. on something, mm -hmm. they are more likely to be convinced than when you try and hammer something in and tell them that's why you need to. Yeah. Forcing them. Forcing them, yeah. yeah. I, I, I get it. So um, from your presentation, one of the things I, I, I picked up is that, can I say, it's a question, can I say that you've had to do extra, as in work harder, to get the narrative um, on the African continent when it comes to the French colonization of some parts of the African continent, did you have to do extra because of the past or the narrative on the African continent? Well, there was not so much French bashing here, uh, thank God, but um, Twitter, Internet, uh, all these social media are pretty much uh, worldwide, and so yes, I did get some questions on that. Um, but actually, it's, it's the contrary. It's probably easier to put out a narrative from like a, a, a country where there's no hard feelings, mm -hmm. there's no past, there's no, um, there's, there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong mm -hmm. that you would have to change a narrative. I think doing what I've done here in a Francophone country where so much resentment, so much fake news as well right. have been, it, it's it's turning around, it's overturning a narrative. I haven't had to do that. There was not so much narrative here. Uh, that it's true that people were learning French and were not so keen on that because they were forced or compelled right. to so do it. So when I talk about the narrative, way. I'm talking about the narrative from the Francophone countries, like spreading eventually to... Oh yeah, yeah there was a bit of it, but exactly. not that much. But I, I think that here in Ghana, well, first of all, you, you have your own experience of a different colonial power. So it gives you a different prospect on, on how uh, the French maybe were... Um, in, in the Francophone countries. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you see things w through a different, more maybe open-minded uh, uh, prisma. Then um, people are, you've got 97% of, of, of your population, of your, your youth that is going to school. And education is absolutely key because it gives people the ability to think for themselves. Mm -hmm. And when you start thinking for yourself, there are lots of fake news and, and reproaches that are made to the French that do not pass. They just, they just people say, yeah, that's, of course, this is nonsense. Mm -hmm. So if you want to manipulate masses, you have to make sure that they are not educated. And uh, that's why some, some strategies are about pr depriving people from education. going to school, uh, from education, because then you can very easily manipulate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But here in Ghana, people are... I've, I haven't seen many conspiracy th theories on, on this and that, even when the rest of the world was going th crazy about the COVID mm -hmm. and going through all sorts of conspiracy theories. Because people are educated and they have a tendency to mind their own businesses somehow. So it's really when you are unhappy and you want to find a reason why you are unhappy and want to blame it on someone, mm -hmm. and when you want a shortcut to a reason without giving it too much thought, then you find an easy uh, target. Mm -hmm. And it's not an African thing. Uh, we, we just run in France the elections and the campaign. And congratulations it, on that. Well, we, 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 we eventually ha have a, a president which right. happens to be a, term. Uh, for the second term. But we've had those um, outrageous ideas that went through. Uh, some candidates were pushing again that if the French or some of the French were unhappy, mm. were unemployed, were paying too much taxes or whatever. It was to blame on the immigrants. So finding someone to blame is just a human reflex. It's not an African thing. Everyone does that when they're unhappy. And of course, this hate speech mm -hmm. was catching much more in the lower uh, cl social classes because they were 
they, they, and they have never seen immigrants. They, they were from villages where they've never had immigrants, mm -hmm. but they were in this situation where they say, yeah, but we don't have them, but we don't want them. Yeah. So, but in the educated uh, people, mm -hmm. they, they do the math and they know that in, in France, in Europe, if we don't have immigrants or second generation mm -hmm. immigrants, the hospitals don't work, we don't have any transports, yeah. we won't have, most of the shops will close. So, so you see, but it, it takes a bit of thoughts, a bit of facts and figures to say this is nonsense. But when you talk to the emotions of people and you say, oh, you are unhappy, and here's the enemy to blame, it works well. So it works in Mali, blaming the French. It works in France, blaming the immigrants. It's just a human thing. So trying to put a narrative out there to say, OK, let's try and do things together instead of trying to find someone to blame for whatever right. happens. Absolutely, I agree. What is France's um, foreign policy in a nutshell? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Before uh, I come to the twins. What's your country's foreign policy? We are, we are very dedicated to multilateralism mm. and to, we want to settle any argument through multilateralism. So we've all been, always been trying to go back to the United Nations or to use the multilateral uh, institutions to try and settle the EU. The EU, or, EU is a, an amazing example. We have been at war with Germany for over a century, century. before we created Europe. And after the Second World War, we decided that creating this institution where we join forces and, and join our um, uh, trade and, 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 and eventually open our mm -hmm. borders mm -hmm. would be the best way to avoid any new uh, world war, at least from, from their side. And it has worked because we've had uh, over 70 years peace in, in, in Europe. Uh, and of course, what happens now with, with Russia and Ukraine is showing us that no one is ever immune of, uh, of, of war. But at least among those European countries, including the UK, even if they Brexited, mm -hmm. but I mean, I include the UK, we have been at war for centuries, uh, pushing borders, gaining territory, mm -hmm. losing it again, and then invading and then coming back. And we were once a Roman Empire and we were occupied by, by the... We, all along our history, we've been occupied and, and colonized mm. by different tribes or, or countries or empires and then decolonized. And so we, we know that as well. But, you know, we've decided to move on by creating Europe because France, if you look at France, it's, it's, it's not enough to, to thrive. It's 60 million people. So that's what Africa is thinking of also, right. doing Pan-Africanism, Pan creating ECOWAS yes. and, and doing a free trade zone. Yeah, We're always stronger together. Okay, I'll come back to you. I would want to, when we come back, we will talk about the legacy you want to leave behind. I'm not um, gone yet. Don't burn like, I don't want to. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not pushing you away. Thank I you. really want you to stay. You know? Thank you. I want you to stay. But we'll talk about your work, how you are able, entertainment. I want to believe that's part of the bilateral relations we have with France. Or Ghana has, um, France has. And that's a great transition. So, so, exactly. so right? I'm talking to them, then we'll come back to that. You give us the details. Okay, so twins don't beg. I, I am unable to identify you. I'm, I'm unable to tell who is Emmanuel and who is Samuel. How can I tell? Is it? Okay, I see something around your neck. Maybe I can use that. Um, yeah, that's um, Samuel. Samuel. And that's Emmanuel. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Now, before your encounter with Her Excellency, let's talk about Swag of Africa briefly. Well, um, Swag of Africa um, goes with Twins Don't Beg. Um, that's like two brands that we manage. And um, we have been in the system for about, let's say, six to seven years. Um, well, 13 years, but um, six to seven years doing photography, videography. Also, I was confused when you said yeah. six to seven years. I thought <laughs> you were not born. <laughs> no, six to seven six years. Six to seven yeah. years, right. Yeah. But we've been in the um, entertainment industry for 13 years. Hmm. Um, but we started photography and videography um, about seven years ago. So we've been doing um, events, mm -hmm. coverage. Um, we've been doing political photography. Um, that's for seven, five years. Um, we've been doing political photography for five years and also been doing a lot of videos, music video behind the scenes, blogging. Mm. Um, let's say everything about um, entertainment, showbiz. Touring Africa. And touring, touring Africa. Africa. Yeah. Okay, so you do blogging, videography, professional photography. And, and telling the African story. Telling yeah. the African story because I see you all over the world. Yeah. You've been globetrotting. I've been following mm -hmm. you very well. Before and Sophie, what was Twins Don't Beg? and Swag of Africa like? 
Well, well, they were just the same. I didn't change it. <laughs> right, right. But before that, you already you already had the, yeah. the, the the exposure before and came into the scene because, like I said, I've been seeing you on the ground all the time working. Um, but I want to know life before and Sophie, your encounter with her. Well, we we were still dreaming big. Um, we we're still very much focused, and I think we met at the Fuchella. Um, I was such a big fan from a distance, and <laughs> we all yeah, have been yeah, from a distance. And and I happened to be, she happened to be in the you know booth with Stoneboy, and I went to holla at Stoneboy and take some few shots of him because Stoneboy was calling me to come and take some pictures. So when I went there, luckily she was there, mm. and I took them some pictures. Perfect and, opportunity. Yeah, exactly. I knocked it. <laughs> I <laughs> I like some that. pictures and, and, and we exchanged. Very shyly came. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I took her contact and here we are. But before that, we were still living African dream. We were still, um, the whole idea of swag of Africa, you know, even to hear the Africa in it is to, you know, project, tell, Africa. project Africa and tell people that we don't stay in we mad houses. And, and as you, uh, exactly. Yeah. So that, that had always been the dream and we we're just you know, for very much full cost and, and building that um, network in Africa and connecting with all creatives across Africa. And, and sometimes if you get opportunity to travel outside Africa, um, we still keep on connecting with everybody. Interesting. Did you previously, did you have any beef with the president, though? <laughs> very interesting story. You know when people start yeah, that way, um, they're asking me, oh, please ask them, because I want to hear their side of the story. So, I said, so, okay. I, I wouldn't call it a beef okay. um, with the presidency. Um, I still work there. Um, I'm the uh, media aide to the second lady of Ghana, official photographer as well. So um, I'm still at the presidency. So you work with the second lady's yeah, office? Yeah. Um, my brother used to work um, at the office of the president, mm. and um, that's something I wouldn't want to talk about. Not really, but yeah. I mean, just. Yeah, like but we, we are still very cool. There's no beef. Um, you know how the diplomatic and, and uh, world. You know, work so we rather not really go into details. I'm happy to know that you've yeah. patched up. Yeah, things. Exactly. I mean, for me, that's the most important thing. Let's move forward yeah, and get exactly. the job done. For me, that's what matters. So, let's talk about the grand event. Now, I've seen photos of the second lady, I've seen photos of her excellency. Yeah. Um, we have put together a very short show reel to tell the story better. I've seen pictures from the corporate entity as well. Yeah. You've had shots of so many um, great personalities. Why is that a concept? You are able to mix it with the entertainment and then the... Well, that's how I, um, our photography journey has been. We've been privileged to capture almost everybody from you know in each industry, from the diplomatic industry, from cultural, from entertainment, from the fashion, from artists. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. work with almost, almost the sectors, all the yeah, sectors, and, and that's what makes us different from any other photographer in Ghana or in the world. You know, um, so when we're doing our exhibition, it was only right we showed people what we have been doing for the past seven All years. Right. I have the exhibition photography. video. If the video is ready, can we take a look at the exhibition video? The exhibition video, please. Second Lady of Ghana, and everyone here, their mother, yourself, myself, and all of you. Yeah. 
for hosting us. Thank you so much. So that was the photo exhibition. And of course, it was your birthday as well. It was. But do you know how this whole photo exhibition started? That's, what I, that's my next question. So tell me about it. So first day I spoke to Anne and I told her, uh, Her Excellency, and I told her, we are photographers from Ghana and we do this. And, and I showed her on Instagram. It's like, I can host an exhibition. Just you, like that? Just like that. Just like that. Anne, what was going through your mind? Uh, how did you come up with this concept though? Well, I knew they would do it all. They're just lending my garden. <laughs> no, um, I don't know. I, I, I thought that what they were doing was, as they explained, so versatile and, and interesting. And what I thought very fascinating in their work was that it captures something very natural. It captures the moment, it captures an expression, and it's a vivid uh, a testimony of what Africa is and what the world is. And um, when I saw that their pictures and the mm -hmm. way they were so dedicated and working, and I thought their story was funny as well. Um, it was, I had hosted a painting exhibition already at the residence, and we are, in France are very, very fan of, of culture. Right. So I thought it would be just fair to give them a platform. And uh, when they organized the, this amazing evening, I was very impressed and, and to be able to, to um, what they displayed but also all the people who there was literally the uh, entire uh, jet set of of, of mm. Accra and and, mm. and beyond yeah. that was mm. there and um that's how people were showing them love and and showing them to they it was statement. amazing i mean it was the first of its kind and mm -hmm. i was so blown away very much impressed now let's talk about the challenges what are some of the challenges in your work well um challenges well talking about the basic challenges um Photography is an expensive business in such a way that most of the equipment that we work with, um, they are very expensive. So um, even starting photography, we um, had to borrow money from people mm -hmm. to buy equipment and pay them on a monthly basis. And um, sometimes the relationship we have with these people and going bad because um, they kind of stress us so much. A bit and yeah, then there's, then a, there's a lot of stress. But mm -hmm. apart from that, um, support there's lack of support there's lack um, of support yeah especially from should i say um leaders um personalities. when you say there's lack of support is it that we don't understand the business well yeah we, we I, I don't think we've gotten there yet right and that's why we're going to commend her excellency and sophie for for the platform you yeah. know she gave us one of the biggest platforms that we couldn't feel it was it was like we're here and she gave us a yeah. platform like that yeah. and we had to make sure that um, we do everything to make sure that event was successful and there was so much that we had to do behind the scenes to make sure we, this event you doesn't, nailed it. doesn't yeah. go bad or doesn't go wrong. So that's the kind of, um, should I say, support that we're looking for. I mean, creatives are basically looking for platforms to, to uh, show, their, show talents. Their, their talent mm -hmm. and and in Ghana here, we don't see that much, that much support. Yeah, exactly happening. So when, she, um, you know, her and the embassy, the full embassy was in support of what we were doing, it made everything so easy and, and made us very credible because people, when we tell people, oh, I'm hosting an exhibition at the mm -hmm. French embassy, mm -hmm. like, oh, people just, that's a big deal. Exactly. Yep. People just look at you. It like, is a big deal. Like, it is. Are you kidding me? <laughs> are, are, you, are you being serious? <laughs> and and it, it was one of the biggest platforms. Any, any, they didn't believe any it creative, until they saw it happening. Exactly. Any creative, any creative would ever get to exhibit their, um, talent, their and talent and all that. So if such opportunities are being presented to young people, I'm sure Ghana will be able to, you know, progress right in that know, direction. Yeah, in that, that direction, especially in the creative um, sector and all that. Sometimes all we need is just an opportunity. And th that's all. Lots of people need. You yeah. give it to them, they will take it and they will run with it. Exactly. So that served as a launch pad, and I'm so happy to because I was there. So I witnessed oh, the night. It was I a beautiful guess. evening. It was a beautiful evening. That's why I said you made a very good statement, and that's so good. Now, Your Excellency, let's talk about the collaboration. 
soft power approach, exactly. diplomacy. Exactly. Why? Because we but, see things happening at the top governments between your government and our governments that had past sort of talking about business investors and yes. we can still talk about this and still bring in investors to come into the arts industry the creative arts industry not too. only not, not only. only so not it's only. big how what's the collaboration so, so that's an exact example to bounce on on what they say uh soft power is about valuing the people it's put, it's giving value to the people and showing the value of what they were doing is showing also to the French investors, look the kind of quality mm. of work that here you can find in Ghana. Look at the kind of talents you can, you can find in Ghana. So attracting investors from France to Ghana is part of my job, mm. but how can I display the kind of talent, the kind of versatility, the kind of diversity of talents that you have, if not using the creative arts, because that is something you can show, you can display, you can, you can uh, showcase. Um, and that's also the reason why we took, uh, we did some collaborations between French and Ghanaian artists, mm -hmm. uh, showcased at the, uh, in a concert in Paris and Accra, and then in Paris uh, last week. This is all about creating bridges, valuing people, and then being attractive. So, of course, making France attractive to Ghana, but also making Ghana attractive to French investors, to French tourists. Mm. So it's like a, a, a virtuous circle. So the collaboration is, because it's, it, it makes sense, that's why I, I gave them this platform, because it was also a way of displaying at the French embassy, so basically sort of in France, the bit of France in the middle of mm -hmm. Accra, um, look, investors, look what these guys are capable of doing. And same when we took these artists in France uh, to, to, to sing. Yeah. So look the quality of the music they're capable of doing. It is international standard. That, so that, that is very that helpful. That was Accra in Paris. Paris in Accra in Paris. Paris and Accra in Paris was last I have, week. Um, is it Accra in Paris? Oh, yes, yeah, so the one in Paris was yeah, Accra in Paris. Yeah. Too. I have Accra in Paris. Can we take a look at that video briefly? Please, if it's ready. Can we take a look at that video? So that was Accra in Paris. And we had Paris in Accra over here. So yeah. it happened here. And then they had to take some Ghanaian artists also summer. to Paris to go and perform. It was some Ghanaian artists. It was the Ghanaian artist. The, you hear that? The Ghanaian, Ghanaian artist. Who had done collaborations mm -hmm. with the French. Ah. So what, were we, what we were broadcasting was the collaborations between French and Ghanaian artists, duos, featurings. And because there were nine duos, Put together mm -hmm. not released yet there was space to give them a platform to do solos mm. and, and present what they were doing so the french had some solos 
the two French, mm -hmm. the uh, Ghanaians had some solos, mm -hmm. but the, 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 the important thing was that they did together some features which are going to be released, and that is oh. amazing because they are amazing tracks. And it's, it's to show the world that here's when you join forces, French yes, and, and, and Ghana. Ghanaian, which is not intuitive, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we don't, we're not used to mm -hmm. work. UK, mm -hmm. Ghana mm -hmm. makes sense, French, French uh, Francophone, uh, Africa and mm -hmm. French, that would make yeah. sense. But that was so unusual to have French and Ghanaians singing together and producing nine different tracks. Mm -hmm. That's what, that was what we were displaying. If we were taking mm -hmm. Ghanaians, mm -hmm. um, singers or, or artists, mm -hmm. That, that I wouldn't be able to list and, and to, to choose uh, which ones to take. There are right. so many. Okay. I would have to charter two <laughs> airplanes to take them all. So I would have taken so many. So it was not me choosing right. who was going. It was those who had made featuring. Featuring. And that's okay. what we were showing. This, this, that was the maiden one, right? Yeah. This is the first time we've seen something. This is the maiden one. Well, I've... Accra in Paris, Paris in Accra. I've this launched a, it. You've launched... Okay, is this going to be an annual event? I have no idea. You will ask my successor. You can't do that. <laughs> but it's a professional thing. So at the end of the day, the connections are made between uh, the, the Ghanaian artists, managers, mm -hmm, producers, mm -hmm. and everything. So if they want to, you know, um, do more editions, I, I'm sure they, they, they will do that through very professional event organizers mm. and, and bring along more... Uh, artists to do more collaborations. I with do hope to see this continue. That would yeah. be great. Yeah, yes. I do hope that we cannot kill this. Yeah, this, this is not a dream. This what, is something we have put together. With with this event is that not just the artists benefited, um, artist managers, bloggers, photographers. The entire industry. Exactly. The the time that she got, you know, different form of benefit in terms of knowledge, in mm -hmm. terms of exchange, mm -hmm. in terms of business. contact. In terms of business, I mean now it's working. Exactly. Now we, we even have a lot of demand from you know Paris and from Europe mm -hmm. and all that. Um, these events virtually give all of us a lot of exposure and all that. And I know more is going to come so because more has to come. The the news is now so you know the foundation has been laid exactly. and we have to continue. Yes. All right now, so exactly. let let me let me ask this question before I forget though. And what will make an ambassador wake up one Sunday morning or Saturday morning and go and queue for Wachi? <laughs> <laughs> it was not a Saturday morning. It was a, a weekday, and I had. It was a weekday. It was a weekday because I went to Makola uh, at 7 a.m. because uh, I needed to do to to get some some stuff that I like to find in in Makola mm -hmm. because the vegetables are much fresher. And uh, that's you there. <laughs> okay. Okay. And uh, and then I had to have breakfast before I went to the market. Mm -hmm. So uh, after I had done all my shopping and everything, I put my stuff in the car and then I was hungry. So um, so it was hunger. Yeah. <laughs> Did you like the watchy? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. That, and actually, I like to choose what I want because I don't want too much Cheeto. Okay. That's too spicy. Right. So, so I want to choose what, what I want, fish mm. or, or chicken, and I like to choose. Oh, really? Oh. So, so you like got your watchy. <laughs> your what, your gari, yeah. your macaroni. Yeah, not too much of this not and a bit of that. So I, I'm, I'm sort of uh, bossying so. around telling. <laughs> I don't she think can't so. send anybody to get her so. watchy. I don't think that would be so. That went viral. How did you feel when you saw that out there? Well, this... I, well, actually, I, I can't remember who posted it, but I was a bit embarrassed because I didn't know how people would react. Uh, I thought, and I felt a bit stalked. And uh, actually, uh, my, my, my manager was was with me when we uh, when I was doing shopping because he wanted to film uh, me asking right. things in in tree right. and asking you know, um, making fun of my tree, of course. So he was filming and said that would be fun to, to, you know, to keep and everything. So I thought we were done. So we had put the shopping in, 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 the, in the car and uh, I didn't know anyone was, was actually uh, shooting at that time. And then he only shot, he was on the side out there, mm -hmm. and he only shot when I was asking um, Mame Wache mm -hmm. five CDs and then people Mame were, we but I had twice, we I, I, I wanted to, actually. But then, then, then he yeah. shot Watch my, my, my <laughs> encounter. <laughs> but this picture, the picture from far, right. is actually, I don't know who took it, and I don't know who sent it out, and I, I was the first surprise, and, and I received a lot of WhatsApp people saying, like, oh, yeah. and I was like, 
Yeah, but mm. what's the well, I'm, I'm happy to know that you enjoyed your watching. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about the foods, the Ghanaian or local dishes that you enjoy, you know, from our country. Let's talk about, you were recently installed as um, the Nkoswa Hene. Nkoswa Hema. sorry, Nkoswa Hema. Uh -huh. All right. Um, you have the name Akusia. Um, yeah, well, that's just because I was born on a on, Sunday. On a Sunday, so you have but Akusia. But my, my stool name is Nana Bene the Third. Nana? Bene the Third. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Ohema. Ohema. Now, let's talk about... It's not recently, actually. It's a year ago. A year ago. Yes. So, literally means development queen. Yes. What's your role? Um, which, which, which... It's is it um, a little village called Bejo. Um, you actually don't, don't pass through. You have to really want to go there. I mean, uh, you go from Kumasi to Sunyani, and then you carry on the road like uh, Berekum, mm -hmm. and then it, it, not very far from Berekum, you have a Bejo, but you really... You really, it's very far. And we did archaeology there and we um, worked with local archaeologists and we found out that this area was uh, as early as the Middle Age, a huge hub of trade mm -hmm. for the entire Africa. And we've got traces, wow. archaeological mm -hmm. traces like potteries and things to show that there was life and vivid life and, and uh, people congregating from everywhere in Africa in this specific area. And that taught us so much because it tells us about migrations mm -hmm. internally mm -hmm. in Africa and how rich this culture was uh, and, and the trading culture of, of Ghana is uh, as early as the 12th, uh, 11th century. Mm. So we were very excited to do that. And because all the findings we wanted to display, we created a museum there. Mm -hmm. And I went to commission the museum and I was very surprised and, 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 and got very emotional when they told me they wanted me to be a queen mother. So I went back there um, recently uh, to, to bring some, some footballs and some, you know, some things for the children. Because mm -hmm. I thought you know, they needed to have things to play on the playground. And thanks to uh, Verna, we brought lots of drinks and sodas and things. And it was huge. It was like a big, big track of everything. And I wanted to be with, you know, to meet with the children. When I met, went to meet with the chiefs, because that's the, uh, the box you really have to tick and you have to go and pay court. See, um, I had to do a bit of dance. Uh, local dance, which oh. I, I, I made it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of very, very versatile dance-wise as well. And um, and uh, they 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 announced that this beautiful little girl, a baby, she she was like six months, and they named her after me oh, and wonderful. and Sophie, not Akusia. Mm. Or and that was very very emotional. I was uh, that was hard, very hard to hold tears when you such an honor is is made to you. So I will go back before I leave. Uh, because I feel it's, I feel some sort of duty. I have a surprise for you. Maybe you should check the screen. Mm. <laughs> oh my <God>. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, I mean, that is Kelvin Boyd's Is the music right? playing? Is the music playing? Can I have the volume? No, because okay. the music is playing, it. then we will talk I think we've seen it. The thing ah. Is, well, that's very helpful because... All, all right. right. Yes. Yeah. What are you doing with the European Union ambassador to Ghana? Ichad, you know when I saw that video, it's I said, Excellency, what the hell were you two thinking? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's all about it's all about honoring, valuing the Ghanaian talents and everything. This song is viral, is worldwide. Right. So having EU, French, and I wanted to drag more ambassadors, but it was not the right time. It was uh, before Easter. I think so we can make it happen. That. Sorry? We can make it happen. Well, we could do a big yes, thing with all the ambassadors. Exactly. And uh, so I asked a few, and, and Irshad said, yes, let's do it. And I thought it was, you know, showing that we, we just love this culture and that this song, like many, many songs and hits that you have in Ghana, they, they have all sp the yeah, space, right. uh, that they deserve all the space in international platforms. So it's also honoring that. And Calvin Boy challenged me, I mean, honestly. So well, you I lived up to the challenge. Good job. Well, I My head. Okay. <laughs> 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 he saw me 
do it. Uh, at the twins don't beg. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. saw me do it like this. Uh, but I was seated. So I sent him and I said, that, that counts. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah, you You've got to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you challenge me. I I'll live up to the challenge. Thank well, good job. I, you try. I can't even do the dance. You know, I'm still letting oh, yeah. it. It took me two days to rehearse. Okay, you have to teach me how to do that. You think you have to do that. All right, we are wrapping up. We are wrapping up. We are wrapping up. You know, I hate to let you go. One hour and it's already five. Yeah. You know, three past it's five. Look like five Let's, minutes. Please, <laughs> it looks like five minutes. Eh? Yeah. I'm sure my producer is listening. So, please, final words. Um, final words. First of all, I want to say thank you. Very big thank you to Her Excellency um, for one of the biggest opportunities um, in our career, and um, want to thank her so much for this amazing chance. And uh, Twins Don't Beg, Swag of Africa News, um, we're just going to make sure that we live up to expectations by um, still projecting the image of Ghana, the image of Africa, and the image of photography and mm -hmm. blogging higher. So that's something li little from us. I don't know if someone wants you to want say to something. You want to add something? Well, um, I mean, we, we, we thank the, um, you know, this, for this opportunity and we're praying more um, doors to be open for creative, especially um, creative that want to explore um, Africa and the world. Because in 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 over this side, as a creative, it's quite you know complicated. Mm. If you have let's say invitations from other countries, and you have to you know go through the process to get um, you know visas and invitations. I'm sure you know how that I works. Know, and, and this is is going to create more. Um, you know, opportunities for young creatives open. and photographers. So we are praying other um, organizations and embassies and all that would give um, young creatives, mm -hmm. um, artists, photographers, platforms. Uh, platforms to um, showcase their their talent and their works. And I think that is an, one way we can help the younger Push. ones because the Push. president wants to see yeah, more. more people. Mm -hmm. You know doing stuff yeah. with their, their hand. And, That's and, and employment, the, right? Exactly. We create employment, In the private sector, exactly. you know, that sector. so it would, you know, encourage um, young right. people to, you know, make Ghana a better place. So we are praying this... Our uh, Ghana. Yeah, our Ghana. We can we'll build see it. A better Ghana. We will see a better Ghana. We are the in the process of seeing open, a better... Open the emb the embassy. They should they open their doors. They should open their doors. I will take Her Excellency's message and I have a personal appeal. Okay, okay. We are listening to the Your Excellency. I actually want to thank them and I want to take this opportunity also to thank all the bloggers who have followed me from the very beginning. Kobiche, Zion Felix, Amiel Debra, Kali J. Uh, and many, J.H. Quick, who, and some who have caught up recently. Um, whatever soft power I would be doing, whatever I would be doing, unless I had this uh, platform and this visibility, no one would have known. And I think the number one person I should thank is, of course, Bola Ray, who pushed me to do this uh, Touch of France show, and who, who gave a sense to, he said, unless people see you, mm -hmm. what's the point of doing things exactly. if no one knows? Yeah. So I really want to, to give him a big thank you for pushing me, um, and he was pushing me also to do uh, the Accra in Paris, Paris in Accra, and um, I think he wrote a book that says uh, nothing is impossible, or yeah. it's possible, it's possible, it's it's possible. possible. Yeah, yeah. and uh, that's, uh, that's something I learned from him, is that really everything is possible, and yeah, that yeah. it should be inspiring the youth and everyone. So thank you very much for having me. You gave me twice this platform, so I can take another star on my loyalty card. And I'm Your loyalty <laughs> card, <laughs> enjoy you. it. And well, thank you very much for watching. Now, this is a personal appeal to the diplomatic community. We need you to open your doors to the creative arts industry. I believe there are so many things that we can do together. We are looking at collaborations from all sectors and the entertainment industry should be one of those sectors. I was recently in Morocco and I was totally blown away. Tourism is part of it. So let's begin to look at the intangibles. They actually create jobs and they also give the right platforms to the youth to also showcase their talent. So without your support, I believe authorities are watching. Without your support and the support from the diplomatic community, it is impossible. But I believe all things are possible. So thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing you collaborate more with the twins. They are doing amazing New York pictures. They are very affordable, right? Okay, I didn't hear that well. Very affordable. Yeah, very. Okay, you heard them. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. You. My guest, Her Excellency Anne-Sophie Avey.
ambassador of France to Ghana, Akosia Nanahema, papa pa Medase for coming. All right, and then also Twins Dome Beg, Emmanuel, Emmanuel and Samuel. Twins Dome Beg. Yes, thank you very much all for honoring our invitation, and thank you so much for making the time to stay with us. You could have been anywhere, but you chose to be here with us, and we are very grateful. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you same time next week. Enjoy your weekend. Long weekend. Thank you.